Hey everybody, today I'm gonna be talking about one of my all-time favorite bad movies, Pop Star. Not to be confused with Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping from 2016 or Pop Star from 2013. Pop Star is a romantic comedy from 2005 starring at the time teen idol Aaron Carter. He's a little bit of old school for that goes a little something like this. I loved Aaron Carter as a kid. I listened to him on Radio Disney. I had his album Aaron's Party on CD. I was there when he beat Shaq. I was actually at that game and I watched Shaq cry. It was great. I was crying too. But what I didn't know back then is that Aaron Carter also starred in his own feature length film, which I discovered by coming across a pop star DVD at a thrift store a while back. I've since fallen in love with this movie and I'm very excited to share with it you with you today. He topped the charts. Can he top high school? I want to be sure to highlight just how big Aaron's pants are on the cover here. You could fit three Aaron Carters into those pants easy. And this is just not a flattering photo. Uh, he looks like Joffrey after he's been dead for a few weeks. He's been making hits. Now he has to make the grade. The Bag the Box sums up the plot of the movie pretty well, actually. Aaron Carter is playing a fictional version of himself called J.D. McQueen, which is, I mean, awesome name. And even though he's a hit pop star, he's gotta go back to high school. You know how it goes in movies for preteens. Raise your voice on DVD today. Your favorite star, Hilary Duff, shines in her best film. Does anyone actually remember this movie? I watched Hilary Duff. I was a Lizzie McGuire fan back in the day, but I have zero recollection of this film. And they're calling it her best movie? Like, have they even seen Cadet Kelly? The pre-menu ads also include a spot for this show, which I don't remember, as well as a Trolls advertisement, which is just... Onyx and Sapphire break all the rules in the biggest street race adventure ever! God, animation back then could just be so fugly. Oh yeah. But hey, there's Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi. Uh, I mean, that's a fond memory at least. I wanted to include the DVD menu on this review because honestly, I just kind of miss them. Blu-ray menus really lack the personality the DVD menus had. I mean, look at this. Coolest kids on the block, hot fashion, whatever this expression Aaron has on his face is, I love all of it, it's beautiful. Okay, enough chit chat. Let's start watching the movie. It's movie time. It's, it's movie time. Okay, guys. The film opens with J.D. McQueen arriving backstage for a performance. A pop star performance, if you will. He gets a light dusting of makeup. Yeah, that's probably enough. And after pumping himself up a little, he runs out on stage and begins performing. No sound check or anything. For a second, I actually thought that he ran out on stage without a microphone, but he was actually already wearing the microphone when he showed up. So it's good to know that J.D. McQueen is always prepared to bust out a tune. So now we got some intro credits playing over a lovely pop song. I mean, this is the good stuff. Story-wise, this is to establish J.D. McQueen as a dreamy teen heartthrob, but it also mixes in actual Aaron Carter concert footage, which is a little confusing. Is he performing in a small indoor theater? Are they outdoors where they can see the fireworks? Or are they trapped in a dark, hellish pop music void? That's up for you to decide. The only thing that's for sure is that Aaron Carter is one talented, Little dude, look at him go. He flips over here, he flips over there. Including the pre-menu trailers, it's about 10 minutes before we actually reach any plot. To say I know J.D. McQueen is both an understatement and an overstatement. I know everything about him, but I don't actually know him. I've never even seen him. To me, he's a poster, an autograph, a CD. It's like he's not a real person because he's too perfect creepy. This is the love interest of the film. I always want to call her Beth, 
but her name is Jane. I don't know why, she just looks like a Beth to me. Jane is a stereotypical nerdy smart girl who has a huge crush on Pip Popper J.D. McQueen. My biggest problem is smart kids aren't cool. It's a universal truth. They're the geeks of the high school class system. While Jane missed her bus because she runs in baby steps, JD is peacefully sleeping in his own tour bus. And he's dreaming about London or Japan or something. It's a little hard to tell. What's up, London? Tokyo. And now it's time for the movie's first joke. I single it out because the first joke of this movie really sets the bar for the caliber of comedy that we're gonna be working with here. Honey, lose the gum. Oh, just genius, genius writing here. She swallows her gum? I can't stop laughing. And how about that phone, huh? My first cell phone had one of those pull-up antennas. Shit was dope. Tour's done. Album's a hit. Singles top 10? That should make the record company happy, right? Rome. What did he say? Rome? Rome. And that's it. That's the whole scene. JD wakes up, Lady swallows her gum, JD says Rome. And then it's over. Looking good so far. Now Jane is more of a typical high schooler. She works at a stand selling something that isn't clearly defined, and she spends most of her time hanging out with ducks. But this is where I spend most of my time. Uh, cool girl. That's cool girl. Sounds like a cool girl you got there. You hear that some super freak got a perfect score on their SAT? Yeah, what a geek. Now is this actually a thing? In TV shows, kids were always getting bullied for being smart. But I'm not totally sure that that's a thing. Especially not by the time you're taking SATs. Do seniors in high school really get bullied for getting into Harvard? Probably some total loser with no life. Speaking of regular school. Speaking of regular school, I've uh, decided to revoke your privilege of being homeschooled. For one teeny tiny reason. You're failing. So what? I'm a pop star. Aaron Carter, ladies and gentlemen, truly an actor ahead of his time. Literally every single moment he graces the screen is flawless. You are gonna be a normal kid at a normal high school. You can't send me to a public school, mom, I'm a celebrity. So JD is getting sent to public school, which you can tell that he doesn't like because of that face right there. And now we can kind of see where these two stories are going to intersect. At school, they're, they're gonna intersect at school. <laughs> I wore uniforms in my school, so I have no idea what kids at public school were wearing at the time, but was this allowed? Were you allowed to look completely naked at public school? I don't know, maybe. And then there's Jane. I gotta say, I really hate looking at Jane. She's always making these faces to try and look, I don't know, nerdier, I guess. But they didn't even put glasses on her. Like that's nerd 101. Nerds wear glasses, it's just what they do. And you know what, glasses might also help hide the fact that she's like six years older than her romantic counterpart. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be in the same grade in this movie, but nobody's buying that. Aaron shows up for his first day of school, which just so happens to be test day, and he ends up sitting right next to Jane, but she doesn't notice because it's test day and she's busy taking a test. That's why all the test answers are written on the board. And how is JD in the same class as Jane? Even if we ignore the age gap, Jane is a literal genius who got a perfect score on her SATs, and JD is failing homeschooling. There's just no way they're in the same what? calculus class. Star. And then the teacher just starts walking around with a mirror on a stick. He's just walking around casually looking under all the students. I'm assuming what he's looking for is cheating, but when he finds a cheater, he just kind of continues on his way. So maybe he's looking for something else. Notice how most of the female students in this classroom opted to wear pants rather than skirts. Now that has to be intentional. 
If they're seniors at this high school, they've been here long enough to know to not wear skirts during test day because Professor Pervert's gonna get his mirror out. JD isn't even taking the test. I mean, how could he? It's his first day, but he is still just a nervous wreck. After Professor Upskirt's class is over, he leaves the school and heads off to his manager's house. And holy crap, look at that view. That is disgusting. JD is all freaked out about the idea of attending public school and taking tests, and he's looking for some guidance. So his manager gives him a tip. He says, hey, you should find a classmate to help you out with your schoolwork. Find the smartest girl in school and ask her to help you out. You're saying I should hook up with a smart girl and cheat off her? So that's, I mean, that's exactly what he does. All right, all right, man. I'll catch you later. All right, do your job. Take care. And cut. By the next day, word has gotten around the school that superstar J.D. McQueen has enrolled and everybody's talking about it. Hope he doesn't run for student body president. Pop rock boys. Well, I guess everybody is thinking about it very loudly. Oh, he's totally dateable. If it hits on my girlfriend, she'll dump me. J.D. McQueen is just so handsome. Wow, J.D. McQueen is just... I mean, he just seems irresistible, really. I'm a pop star. We know that Jane is a huge McQueen fan, but before she has her chance at JD, one of the scantily clad bullies from earlier decides that she wants to take a crack at him first. I'm talking about me and JD McQueen. Now that would be a tight fit. Gross. She like walks over and writes her number on his hand with barely any introduction. And then she- Know what double A stands for? Small battery. Alcoholics Anonymous, American Airlines. I know it's not her initials because her name is Whitney, so take a guess, AA? It means you can call me anytime, anywhere. Oh, of course. Smooth, smooth. That's some very real teenager slang you got there. Small battery. This whole time JD is being flirted with, Jane is secretly yoinking all of his shit. And when he puts the pieces together, he lies to a janitor to gain access to her locker. Could you help me for a second? They gave me a key to my locker, but I can't find it. Being a pop star, it's kind of hard to keep track of this kind of stuff. And finds out that Jane is like obsessed with him. His reaction to all of this? Eh, no big deal. I'm just gonna start looking through all her shit. Okay, so Jane's at home working on homework or something and her little sister is in the kitchen. You wanna quench your thirst? Be like Jane McQueen. Drink Crystal guys. He's so cute. Ah, gross. And how about JD's commercial for water, huh? When I think trendy teenage pop star brand collaboration, my first thought is bottled water spokesperson. He's not even holding the bottle where you can see the label. Be like Jane McQueen, drink crystal guys. Turns out that Jane's sister is starting a lemonade stand even though she's clearly too old to be starting a lemonade stand. But you know, Jane looks too old to be in high school so maybe that's just a family trait or something. That'll be one dollar. Uh, let me give you a tip. Get the money first. Man, I really hate listening to Jane speak. If any part of this movie is a chore, it's Jane's incessant saliva. My, my name is, is sure. I am in my jazz on Thursdays and Fridays and alternating weekends. Between song royalties, product endorsements, and concert revenues, he makes over $10 million a year. Actually, you know what? Jane's dad is also insufferable. There's this whole punctuation joke. JD, um, that's J period, D period. Oh, I see. Well, not I period, C period, but I see, period. You see Berkeley? Um, no, actually, uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, I meant you period, C period, Berkeley. And it just goes on and on for- Dad's just saying that because he's been teaching it S period, C period, U period for <laughs> a very long period. Holy shit, I'm about to have my period. So now Jane has become JD McQueen's calculus tutor, but more importantly, she's become his friend. Now it should be no surprise that these sparks start flying immediately. Is it okay if I walk you to class? I don't wanna piss your boyfriend off. I don't have a boyfriend. I was just checking. 
<laughs> the uh, the lack of chemistry between the two main characters is perhaps one of the film's strongest assets. Aaron Carter has got absolutely no charisma in this movie. Hey, cutie, got a day for prom? And yet everyone's all, oh, he's so dreamy. Oh, he's so hot. Hi, JD. What's it like knowing every girl wants to kiss you? <laughs> Will they? Won't they? I mean, this is a rom-com, so they probably will, but does anyone really care? Also, dude, you might want to roll up the window on your fancy-ass car before you go to class. Jane, he thinks you're special. Hello. Go for it. Yeah, JD could have any girl he wants. Go for it. I just go for it already! Go, go for it. it. Jane finds a four-leaf clover just laying in front of her in the grass. It's just kind of laying there. And then she gets trampled to death. Okay, let's skip forward a little bit. It's time for Jane and JD's first date. Do you have a special place? My earlobes. A girl nibbles on them and it's like, wow. Or at least it seems like a date at first. This is my special place. But then it turns out that they're just doing math together. Just a couple of little study buddies. It also looks like the planet that they live on is much closer to the sun than our own. Hi, right, let me see this. They're a perfect match. They're running by the beach, fully clothed, sand in their shoes. I'm sure JD's giant pants are soaked. Holy shit, is that a dolphin? I love that they include this shot of them walking back from the beach where they just look absolutely miserable. Okay, I haven't mentioned it until now, but there's been a running theme of cars in this movie. JD McQueen's got a lot of cool cars at his home. He drives this dope ass Mercedes Benz that looks like crap. And he also drives this slick red Porsche. My earlobes. Jane, on the other hand, rides the bus and she also isn't a very good driver. And after their fun beach date, she's admiring JD's fancy car. You wanna drive it? Oh, I'm not a very good driver. I hit a deer last December and I haven't driven since. That's not your fault. They jump in front of cars all the time. Not when they're attached to Santa Claus and seven plastic reindeer. So what? You had an accident. So what? You had an accident. <laughs> My favorite line in the whole movie. So what? You had an accident. I've never driven a Porsche before. It's time to learn. Man, JD's got a million dollars. What does he care if Jane crashes his fancy car? He's a pop star. I'm a pop star. Jane is having problems right off the bat. She can't even get the car in drive. I'll put it in the gear for you. Hit it. <laughs> ah, well, that's all the driving instruction you need. Hit it. What else is there to driving, really? The montages in this movie are something else, man. Uh, not only do they seem like they're in the movie to pad out the film's runtime, but it also feels like they didn't film enough footage for the montages because they have to use all of these awkward shots, I'm assuming because they don't have any better options. Oh, look, look at this. She's supposed to be doing donuts. dead? Is this hell? And before your brain even has a chance to register that this montage is over, it's time for another montage. This time it's of Jane typing on the computer and JD playing on the guitar. She's typing, he's playing, she's typing, he's playing, she's typing, he's playing. Cool's my first text message. So they had their first date, they're texting buddies now. What do you think is next in their exciting relationship? Like, what's day two gonna look like? Jane, I thought this would look good on you. JD, he bought me a car. He bought her a car. He's JD McQueen. To him, buying a car is like buying a pair of sneakers. Oh my god, Jane, we've never talked before, but I love your car. JD, is this for real? Unless you want a different color. I don't understand why. You needed a car. I wanted to help you out. 
Maybe someday you could help me out too. Oh, gross. What is it with this movie and the weird sexual vibes? That's grooming. That's grooming. I've seen it on the internet, Aaron. You can get canceled for that kind of thing nowadays. You can't just give a woman a car. Dad, you remember you said if I got a car, you'd pay for my insurance? <laughs> Bitch got Oprah'd. Things sure are going great for our loving couple. They're rollerblading together in full protective gear, making awkward body contact along the way, just like true lovers do. Jane is wearing a shirt that says true love on it in case you need it literally spelled out for you. She's also popular now and she's getting blatantly ogled by all of the boys, which was a good thing back then. So her life is pretty sweet right now. She's sitting on a couch, hugging a picture of JD that she clearly printed out on her computer, and she's waving her nasty toe jam in my face. What is this? It's cinema genius, that's what it is. It's art. Was that your high school helper I saw today at the autograph thing? <laughs> yeah, her name's Jane Brighton. Uh -huh. She showed me her special place. Behind the earlobes? Okay, I need to move a little bit faster. I'm just now realizing how long I've been talking and as much as I'd love to tell you every single thing that I love about Popstar, I need to be sure that I'm saving some surprises for those that dare to go out and watch it themselves. Obviously, Jane and JD McQueen are headed for trouble. Their relationship is perfect and we're about halfway through the movie, which means, eh, it's time for some trouble. But it's gonna have to be some pretty big trouble, right? Like, their relationship is perfect. They're the perfect couple. They're in true love. Also, he bought her a Porsche. I mean, that seems like a pretty big gesture of commitment. They're what every couple in high school wish that they could be. So what is this huge monumental event that's gonna tear them apart? And you've been listening to the very hot J.D. McQueen. Well, during a radio interview with a host who once again seems way too old to be flirting with this little boy. Oh, hey, there he oh, is. Hi. Speak of the good looking devil in any walks. The moms just can't help themselves in this movie. Anyway, uh, during this radio interview, Aaron addresses a rumor that he has a girlfriend named London. I think that certain someone could be a certain London Sheridan ring any bells? My relationship with London is special. Really special? So obviously Jane is like, who that bitch? Who makes your relationship with her so special? I don't know. I mean, we come from the same kind of world and she's not some loser user. Well, I'm not a loser and I'm not a user. Why don't you go back to your famous world where everyone's so special? Uh, I just love this fake slang, man. Loser user, AA means anytime, anywhere. Is it bad writing or is it genius world building? JD, what's it like to be in public school again? Well, I've actually never been to public school before, but um, I'm excited to be here. You know, I um, want to make some new friends and do really good in my schoolwork. This is Jerry Kaminsky on the town with Channel 6, where a young boy is going to high school. This story is developing. I'm Jerry Kaminsky, Channel 6. Okay, so JD is stopping by Jane's sister's lemonade stand, and like, she's she's not even in her front yard. She's set up right in the middle of the sidewalk. Her customers are gonna have to run around her. It's, it's kind of genius when you think about it. And then when Jane walks up to talk to JD, her sister just stands there staring off into the distance for the rest of the scene. They could have had another person walk by and get some lemonade, give her something to do. Nope, just stand over there and stare at a car. People just want to be friends with me because I'm famous. Look at you. Not really. I'm a pop star. I'm a pop star. Now they've been through a little bit of turbulence, but Jane and JD do get back together after, well, they don't resolve their issues or talk about who London is or they do anything really. They just kind of start dating again. I mean, think about it. The only person I really know is you. By now though, their relationship isn't even the main plot point of the movie anymore. So I don't really understand why they had to break up in the first place. 
So when did your parents get divorced? And now it's time for my favorite part of this entire movie, and that's the storyline about JD being too afraid to take tests. Now throughout the movie, they have hinted at this. We know that this is a problem for JD, but towards the end of the film, he's put in a position where his entire pop music career rests on the outcome of one single test. If you're not out on tour this summer, you're out. What do you mean, period? I'm about to have my period. If he fails the test, they're gonna fail him as a pop star or something. And despite his intense studying, JD's nerves end up getting the better of him and he begins blatantly copying off Jane's answers right in the middle of the test. Now the teacher doesn't notice because he's too busy wandering around the classroom with his pervert mirror, but that doesn't stop Jane from noticing. Listen, I get nervous when I take tests. Next thing you're gonna tell me that you have stage fright. No, it only happens when I take tests. My whole body freezes up. Uh-oh, trouble in paradise. You know what that means, don't ya? Oh yeah, it's time for a makeover montage. Nothing makes those frowns turn upside downs faster than a makeover montage. And as far as makeover montages go, this one certainly is a makeover montage. Actually, you know, it kind of just looks like all they do is style her hair with a bit of stiff it. So not that much of a makeover. In fact, she was wearing that makeup when she went in there. So uh, never mind. I'm sorry if that montage was a bit of a disappointment for you, but I'm going to make it up to you guys with, you guessed it, another montage. I'm not here to roast my boy Aaron Carter's musical ability. Aaron's party is a masterpiece of music, and you know what? His new efforts are earworms as well. But man, this just sucks. <laughs> when Jane learns that JD voluntarily turned himself into the cheating police, she begins to wonder if there's any weight to that whole scared of tests story that JD was selling earlier. Do you really think there's such a thing as a fear of tests? Yeah, right. Testophobia. Testophobia? That sounds serious. I wonder where we could learn more about such a serious condition. And I wonder if a montage would help. Testophobia is for real. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's real. Smartest thing anyone says in the whole movie. There it is right there. I mean, look at Jane's sources here. Phobiafinder.com, GeoCities. Look, this one straight up says, sorry, no results found for testophobia. Testophobia is for real. Some entertainers get chronic panic attacks so severe that they become physically ill with headaches, fever, even vomiting. That sounds like JD right before a test. Testophobia is for real. Now that Jane is convinced that JD's testophobia is real, she goes to bat for him and talks to Professor Pervert, claiming that JD just needs to be in the right environment to take a test and he'll do just fine. He just needs to be in his special place. Teacher's like, sure. Up there's a pretty scary place for most of us, but Jane seems to think it's your special place. Behind the earlobes? All right, everybody, we've made it. It's time. JD McQueen's entire pop career hangs in the balance, which means that to get an A, we're gonna need the mother of all montages. It's just the greatest thing I've ever seen. This is the climax of the entire story, and it's the least impressive scene in the movie. He's sitting there taking a test. There's lights flashing. Sometimes you hear the crowd go wild. It lasts for over a minute. It's just the best thing I've ever seen. Jane's not gonna like this very much. You did better than she did. I did? Aaron has successfully passed his test, surpassing the grade of someone who got a perfect score on her SATs, which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Aaron Carter truly is the handsomest, most talented boy in all of high school. 
I mean, uh, JD McQueen. All that stuff, except I said it about JD McQueen. So at the end of it all, everything wraps up just like how you'd expect. With a pop song, of course. Give me half a chance. I'll make you understand. Jane and JD end up together. The fat, nerdy guy scores a date with London, who was literally only in the movie to be a Paris Hilton joke, I guess. I don't get it. And the mean girl's boob explodes. Let me out of the water. The end. Give me half a chance. Sometimes a bad movie is so nonsensical and weird that it's hilarious. I think that's what propels most trendy bad movies. Half the fun of watching The Room, for instance, is trying to figure out what is going on. But I think pop star's strength is actually the opposite. It's a very digestible film. The story is easy to follow. They set things up in the beginning of the movie that are relevant later on. They have running jokes. The camera work is fine for the most part. There are conflicts that get resolved, you know, that kind of things. Things that make a movie. All of the pieces are there, it's just not very good. It almost feels like a bunch of moms got together and tried to make a Disney Channel original movie around Aaron Carter. That's how I would describe the vibe of this film. Imitation decom made by moms. First off, I'd like to thank my parents for always making sure I did my best and not letting me cheat myself out of my full potential. There are also a bunch of cameos by older celebrities like David Cassidy, Leif Garrett, Natalia Livingston, Tom Bosley, Stella Stevens, and some more people that your grandparents might know. And at the center of it all is Aaron Carter and his terrible acting. It really does anchor the whole film down. We're gonna have pizza and... Holy cow. Pizza and holy cow. <laughs> Sounds yummy. When every girl in the movie is talking about how hot and dreamy JD McQueen is, and this is JD McQueen. So what, you had an accident. I mean, it's just too good. You were just voted by teen people as one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. I know. It was an honor. You were know, were was, you excited? It was a little weird. <laughs> so that's the end of the movie, but I do want to mention just a few more stray observations that I had that I wasn't able to find a place to mention earlier. I had to try and keep my thoughts briefish for this video, but I can't end without mentioning the following pop star observations. There's a scene where Jane is talking to her dad, and she's got all these pictures of J.D. McQueen on her wall, including some of him wearing the exact shirt that he was wearing earlier today. Coincidence or creepy? There's this whole plot line about this mystical janitor that's giving out advice. Judge not those who try and fail, those that fail to try. To whom much is given, much is expected. You can't change the wind, adjust your sail. There's a plot line about JD's manager banging a bunch of ladies, which is a weird thing to put into a kid's movie. Dating many girls makes the heart feel old. Finding the right woman makes it feel young again. Now this line here is hilarious. You are so hot, oh my God. I'm so glad you're my friend. I have nothing to add to that one, I just like it. I did mention that JD gives Jane a car, which is way over the line, but he also gives her a cell phone like the very first time that they meet. Here, take this. Now we're connected. That's not okay. At one point, Jane's dad ties a string around a door and also his toe. And I, I don't know what he's doing. Like, are you trying to meet the toe fairy or something? What's the deal? Oh, and let's end on one of my favorites. Uh, there's a scene where all three women in the shot are wearing flowers. You got retro flowers and you got some Asian inspired flowers over here. Uh, you know what? I have actually got the audio of when I first made this discovery. Hold on, let me play that instead. Yeah. Look at their flowers. Everyone's wearing flowers. <laughs> Everyone's wearing yeah. 70s flowers. Oh, oh more flowers. <laughs> 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 and that's it. That is my review of Popstar, one of my favorite bad movies. Is this a movie that I think that everyone will enjoy watching? Eh, probably not. I think my childhood interest in Aaron Carter helps, and I also think that being alive during 2005 helped. Part of the joy of this movie is just soaking in all that early 2000s goodness. The fashion, the technology. Also, you know, it seemed like all of the big pop stars of that time were appearing in movies like this, with 
maybe bigger budgets. You had Britney Spears in Crossroads, Kelly Clarkson in From Justin to Kelly, Lance Bass in Seriously Guys, I'm Straight. Kevin just met the girl of his dreams. There's only one small problem. So it makes a lot of sense for Aaron to have appeared in a movie like this, and I'm very happy to have stumbled upon it accidentally. So thank you, Aaron, for this masterpiece of cinema, and good luck with getting your face punched in or, or whatever you're up to now. Honey, I'm home. How was your show, dear? Exhausting. We did three encores, and Grant needs all the new songs by Monday, so I'll be busy this weekend. Well, this will make you feel better. I made your favorite, cream pie. 